In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessings, everyone. And welcome to a very special celebration, a very special Sunday. Today is the beginning of ordinary time, because already when we come to next Sunday, it will be called the second Sunday of ordinary time. And yet, um, it's a special feast. It's a feast of the baptism of the Lord. Today, in essence, marks the conclusion of the Christmas season. Christmas season is not over after the 25th, because we have so many weeks preparing for it. It is not over after New Year's or after the Feast of the Magi. It is completed today. Because Christmas is not about the birth of Jesus only. It's about the presentation of Jesus to the world. And this happens in a number of ways in those first few weeks. And today marks the very culmination, the fulfillment of the presentation of who Jesus is at the Jordan River. When the voice of God the Father was heard, this is my beloved Son. So today we... Um, and especially for the children following us, they may be wondering, well, Jesus wasn't a baby when he was baptized, and he was only born two weeks ago. How can he be an old person now, an older person now, 30 years old, in two weeks? Are you kidding? Well, we know that the time in our celebration is more than the regular time, but Cyril, it's a very good question. And the question that we should be asking ourselves is, boys and girls, listen to this very carefully, is where did he spend these last 30 years? We know that he was born in Bethlehem. We know that they went back after a short stay in Egypt, which wasn't a vacation, by the way. After a short stay in Egypt, they went back to Nazareth. But these 30 years, and there's a very beautiful answer that I need to share with you. We'll talk about it later. Where did he stay? In his hometown, in his house, in his home. You know, those who study scripture call it the hidden years of Jesus. Those who want to fantasize about things, talk about in all this time, Jesus went to India, went to learn this and to study this. Nothing to do with what the church teaches. Because church helps us to understand very beautifully the value of the house, the value of the home. And I'm saying this in a special way to you, my dear friends, my dear young friends today, because just a couple of days ago we learned that uh, we're not ready to go to school yet. So we're going to be doing more learning at home, uh, online learning, which is good, and we keep on learning every opportunity is an opportunity to grow deeper into the understanding of who we are, what our world is all about, who God is. And because many times we may fail to see this, the realization that our home is the best school, our home is the best church, our parents are the best teachers, our parents are the best priests. And God uses all this. And then, of course, the church is the family of families. And so we give thanks to God. Many times we have failed to see this, to understand this. And to you parents, I know that um, in the last several months, so much more has been placed on your shoulders. And I want to reassure you that we continue to pray for you every day. And so we begin our Eucharist today, Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, asking God forgiveness for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our very flesh, grant, we pray, that we may be inwardly transformed through him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
dalla prima lettera di San Giovanni Apostolo. Carissimi, chiunque crede che Gesù è il Cristo è stato generato da Dio e chi ama colui che ha generato ama anche chi da lui è stato generato. In questo conosciamo di amare i figli di Dio, quando amiamo Dio e osserviamo i Suoi comandamenti. In questo, infatti, consiste l'amore di Dio, nell'osservare i Suoi comandamenti, e i Suoi comandamenti non sono gravosi. Chiunque è stato generato da Dio vince il mondo, e questa è la vittoria che ha vinto il mondo, la nostra fede. E chi è che vince il mondo se non chi crede che Gesù è il figlio di Dio? Egli è colui che è venuto con acqua e sangue, Gesù Cristo, non con l'acqua soltanto, ma con l'acqua e con il sangue, ed è lo Spirito che dà testimonianza, perché lo Spirito è la verità, poiché tre sono quelli che danno testimonianza, lo Spirito, l'acqua e il sangue, e questi tre sono concordi. Se accettiamo la testimonianza degli uomini, la testimonianza di Dio è superiore, e questa è la testimonianza di Dio che Egli ha dato riguardo al proprio Figlio. Parola di Dio. Rendiamo Egli grazie a Dio. Dio. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In his preaching, he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. I trust you're all well and that with this day, as we 
bid farewell to our Christmas season of this year, I trust somehow, even though in a different way, this Christmas season has enriched us in many ways. At least I pray for that. Long before I became a priest, I was introduced to the figure of a man, the story of a man, that has been part of me, even though a way, in a way a quiet part of me, but very much present in me since then. And this person's name is Charles de Foucault. I do you like my French? Charles de Foucault. A man who lived in the middle of the 1800s until sometimes after the beginning of the 1900s. He was an aristocrat. He was in the military. But a man who was always searching for something. And he gave up both the military, the aristocracy, and kind of dwelt in the simplicity and the humility of life. And where was the place they could encounter this? In Nazareth. Not only did he love Jesus, but he loved the humility of the family of Nazareth and lived there for a number of years before continuing his work, eventually becoming a priest, going to live alone as a hermit in the desert, and there, sadly, being um, martyred. Although he lived and died alone, a few years after his death, a community of men and another one of women was formed bearing his identity, known as the Little Brothers of Jesus and the Little Sisters of Jesus. What touched me most about his um, life was, first of all, his search. He was searching for something that would give meaning to his life. And the fact that he searched for that in a humble way. I mean, of all the places in the Holy Land where we could be so enriched and fulfilled by the mysteries of our faith, he chose specifically Nazareth in the hidden life of Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of our liturgy, many people have tried to investigate and formulate things about these 30 years of Jesus before his baptism with fantastic ideas. Great movies could be made, actually have been made, about everything that Jesus would have done in the years that we don't know. Charles de Foucault saw that um, one of the greatest gifts Jesus was given and we have been given is the gift of a family. And so he chose to live and to work in Bethlehem. I'm sorry, in Nazareth. I'm sure that Bethlehem was part of his pilgrimage as well, but Nazareth. And many times I've attempted in our pilgrimage pilgrimages to the Holy Land to find the places where and to lead the group into the places of Charles de Foucault. But it's interesting that even companies that organize tours of groups, of large groups of pilgrim, have no idea. And so one year when I was finishing my studies in Milan and three of my friends from Epiphany of Our Lord came over to um, share a few days with me before coming back to Canada, we all decided to go for a week to the Holy Land. And being just a few of us, we actually managed to go where Charles de Foucault lived. A very humble place. Um, and we just prayed there. Now, for Charles de Foucault, Nazareth was so important. They lived years there. Years. When the pilgrims go to Nazareth and I've done that many times it will be changing from now on we go through the church of the Annunciation the house of Joseph the synagogue 
of Nazareth, at the um, fountain of Mary. And if we include lunch, we'll spend at the most half a day. At the most. Charles of Foucault spent years because he understood that so much happens in the ordinary way of life. So much. And Charles Foucault, that this year, we believe, will be officially canonized a saint. And I think everybody will get to know him then. Understood that and lived by that. There was a phrase in his, um, in his theology, in his spirituality, that is what touched me the most about him. And the phrase is this. Jesus is the master of the impossible. Hmm? So try to think of that. Try to keep that in your heart. Jesus is the master of the impossible. And the logo that he used and that his community, what the community was formed after his passing, has using is basically a heart surmounted by a cross. Because when our hearts have enthroned that cross in them, there's nothing else that we need. And for Charles de Foucault, and this is what I think, it's so important for us today. Where does all that happen? In our home. In our upbringing. It is very important for us as Christian homes remembering that the home is the domestic church, the place where everything begins. And it is in his hometown, in his playing as a child, in his working in his father's carpentry shop, in his going to help his mother pick water from the well, in helping his dad finish the carpentry work, in his prayer life that was both at home and in the surrounding area, that Jesus came to understand who he was. The gospel tells us that Jesus grew in age and wisdom. And where does this age and the wisdom grow? What is the wonderful phrase that we, can, that we know? And I think even in the schools, there is a song that uh, is called this, Bloom Where You Are, planted and in the life of Nazareth Jesus grew in the work of Nazareth Jesus grew in the prayers in the synagogue of Nazareth Jesus slowly understood more and more who he was and then that Jordan day when he went to the place where others were also with him to be baptized to share in the baptism of repentance. And then, of course, Christ himself. By stepping in that water, as we read in the liturgy, sanctified the waters that sanctify us. By stepping into that water and listening to the voice of the Father that proclaimed to the whole world who this man was, his identity is fully made manifest to the whole world and to the whole of creation. This is my son, the beloved. My favor rests on him. Whenever we do baptisms, as it will be baptism today and next week, I invite the parents, I read the same passage of scripture that we heard today. I invite the parents to help their child as he or she grows up, understand that he or she is a beloved child of God. Because in baptism, we become one with Christ, the only Son. We become one with Him. And unlike what maybe at times the world may dangerously tell us we are, we are and we go beyond that. We are children of the Father. And so the baptism of Jesus today reminds us that we are beloved, we are blessed. And today, once again, I thank God for the gift of all these years, helping me see in the life of Charles de Foucault and to understand how important family life, 
humility, daily life, daily work is in helping us understand who we are and becoming more and more the people God has made us to be. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Day by day, moment by moment, event after event, our prayers continue to be lifted up to God. And once again, we present the prayers of our pandemic prayer. Most merciful and triune God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear, we come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, endow caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill, protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one and welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion, remove all fear from our hearts, and fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, Jesus we, we trust, trust in, in you. you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, Prega per noi peccatori, adesso e nell'ora della nostra morte. Amen. Benedetto sei tu, Signore, Dio dell'universo, dalla tua bontà abbiamo ricevuto questo pane, frutto della terra. Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il nostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onnipotente. Accept, O oh Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor, the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. 
and by the spirits descending in him in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of salvation, the oil of gladness, and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Patrick, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that we, with the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes our sins away. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By the blood of Christ, lead us to the everlasting life. For anyone unable to receive spiritual communion, I mean rather the uh, sacramental communion now, please be fed with the words of the spiritual communion we are now reciting. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Comunione spirituale. Gesù mio, credo che sei realmente presente nel Santissimo Sacramento dell'altare. Ti amo sopra ogni cosa e ti desidero nell'anima mia, poiché ora non posso riceverti sacramentalmente. Vieni almeno spiritualmente nel mio povero cuore. Come già venuto io ti abbraccio e tutto mi unisco a te. Non permettere che mi abbia mai a separare da te. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing today, let us once again turn to St. Michael the Archangel, patron of our Archdiocese. San Michele Arcangelo, difendici nella lotta, sii nostro aiuto contro la cattiveria e l'insidia del demonio. Che Dio eserciti il suo dominio su di lui, supplichevoli ti preghiamo. Tu che sei il principe della milizia celeste, con la forza divina, rinchiudi nell'inferno Satana e gli altri spiriti maligni che girano il mondo per portare le anime alla dannazione. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, San Michele Arcangelo, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As faithful children of God, let us enter together the period of the, that we follow every single day, almost every day of the year. And that is the time that we call the ordinary time of the church. And may every ordinary act in our life become extraordinary through the presence of God. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.